Okay, so we're going to talk about how we, we can validate user input and make sure that what, what is entered is an integer. So we've got this grades list here, and we want the user to input a new grade. So I have this, I made this variable new grade, and it's set to the output from this function here. Well, it's, it's the input function. It's set to whatever they type in, right? So if I run my program, please enter a grade, I can type something in. But what if the user types a string? Really, we, we need to validate that they've typed in an integer. And furthermore, we probably want to validate that it's between 0 and 100. So if I was to just do this, I could say new grade equals int new grade. That is to set a new value, which is its previous value, but typecast to an integer. Um, this could work or it could break your program. So print new grade. <clears throat> so if I rerun it now, and I put 90, it's printed out the new grade. It's converted it to an integer, even though what I typed in was actually stored as a string originally, because that's what input does. I changed it to be an integer, and it printed it out. But what if I typed this as my grade? Now the program is broken because what it's trying to do here is not possible. It's trying to convert this string, Nelson, to an integer, and Python doesn't know how to do that because it doesn't make any sense, right? So the way that we can get around this is with something called the try and accept block. So if I put the word try here, and then I need to indent, then what's going to happen is it'll anything that's indented that's inside this try block, it's going to attempt to run and if there is an error, instead of crashing, it will go here to accept. So anything I put in the accept block is going to run if there was an error in the try block. So in this case, I can say invalid grade. And then something after, so if I unindent, I can print thank you, okay? So enter a grade, let's go with 90, thank you. Let's try again, Nelson, invalid grade. You notice it still does thank you. It doesn't stop running the program, but it's gonna print this. So that's our first step, is understanding the try and accept. So just to review that again, the program, Python, will attempt to run any statements that are in this try block, and if there is an error, it won't, obviously it can't run that statement if there's an error, but instead of crashing your program and giving you the red text over here, it will jump to accept. And here's the power of this. We can then combine this with a while loop, a conditional loop to make sure that what they've entered is in fact an integer or really what we need to do is ask again for an input if it's not. So what I wanna do is create a while loop and I'm going to call this while problem equals true. And I need, I think I need to use a capital. Uh, maybe I don't. Oops. <laughs> true. Let me try it like this. Now, if this is inside the while loop, I need to indent this whole thing. So what I just did was selected it all and I pushed tab on the keyboard to indent all of that together. So while problem equals true, and I haven't defined problem yet, I need to go back and do that. Try new grade equals int new grade, accept. So in this case, in the accept, I need to get another input. I need to do new grade equals input. Again, I need to just copy this. Okay. And in this case, I could print grade accepted something like that and now i need to actually set i need to define problem first of all the program doesn't know what the heck i'm talking about so i need to say problem equals true and since i've set i'm saying there is a problem and then I'm, my while loop is checking if there is a problem then it's going to do this stuff here it's going to enter the while loop and it's going to do the try and if there's a if there's a, an issue with that, it'll go here to accept. So let's see if this works. 
Um, 90, same true is not defined. Okay, I think it does need to be capital. Let's try that again. 90, great, accepted. Okay. So what I need to do then, so you can see it's stuck in this while loop. I need to, in this case, the grade has been accepted. I now need to set problem to false with a capital F so that it breaks out of the while loop, right? If, if this problem is always true, it's just going to continually do this while loop forever and ever. So I'm going to clear the console here. Clear. Come on. Okay. 90. Great. Accepted. Thank you. So because problem was true, it, it checked this condition and said, yes, this is correct. Problem is true. It enters the while loop and it's going to try typecasting. This is called typecasting. It's going to try changing new grade to an integer. Um, and remember, if there's an error on this line, it'll instantly jump down to accept down here. If it does successfully do this, that means what they entered could be converted to an integer and it'll print grade accepted and it'll set problem to false so that we won't continue this while loop. Okay, let's see what happens if I enter a string invalid grade. Please enter a grade. Invalid grade. Please enter a grade. So it's going to do this as long as what I enter is not an integer. So that is an integer, so it'll be accepted. Now, if I want to further validate that it's between, say, 0 and 100, I need to do that here. So before I set problem to false, I want to make sure, I want to say, if new grade is less than or equal to 100, and new grade is greater than or equal to zero, then I want to set the problem to false. Um, and I could have an else here that prints invalid grade must be between zero to 100. Okay, so let's try this out. So I'm entering something that's too high. So invalid grade must be between zero and 100. Okay, now what do I need to do? I need to ask for new input, don't I? Because remember, it will only go to this accept block if there was an error up here that crashes the program. There's no error that would crash the program. It's just going to keep doing, you know, problem is still true. It's going to keep doing this. It's never actually asking for a new grade. So I could put that in here. I could just do this new grade input again. Let's try this again. So Nelson invalid 999 must be between zero and hundred. Enter a new grade, 800, whatever. Okay. 85 grade accepted. There we go. So that is um, how I would like to do this, or that's how I like to think of this in my mind. I know there are other ways, and um, I know that actually Kentaro has done it a different way, and maybe some other people have different ideas. There are many ways actually of doing this. This is the way that I like to imagine it. I, I imagine that at first there's a problem, meaning we've not yet validated that the input is correct. So I'm going to just assume there's a problem. That's going to be my condition to enter the while loop. And then I'm going to try converting the new grade to an integer. And then once it's been converted to an integer, now I can do this. I can check mathematically, make these comparison statements. Is it greater or less than what I want it to be, you know, within a certain range? If it passes both of those tests, now I set problem to false so that it breaks out of this while loop. If it didn't pass this test here, this is called a range check. It's not within the correct range. I print invalid grade and I ask for a new grade. Remember this except will happen if there was an error up here that would otherwise have crashed the program. And that would be this line right here. Because if they entered a string like Nelson, the program doesn't know how to convert that to an integer. So it would crash the program, but because we have it in the try block, it won't crash. It'll just go down here instead. So there you go.